Hello and welcome. As you know, I'm Dr. Pauline Baird from the village of Buxton, Guyana, and I tell stories. I tell the stories of my village. I tell our family histories, our whispered stories, our practice hidden, sometimes long forgotten traditions. Now talk story. Now I announce myself as Dr. Pauline Baird because I have a particular mission. It's not because I think that I'm the only doctor there is, or I'm full of myself, or I'm smelling myself. Not at all. I am here because I want to inspire young girls and boys from my village. I want to inspire people all around the world. And it's pretty ambitious. Um, so where does that come from? You see, when I was a girl, I experienced trauma. Our house burned when I was 10. My last two siblings burnt in the fire. Six months later, I lost my mother. She died of a broken heart. So I grew up without a mother. I had every excuse to fail, but I didn't. I didn't because of a number of things and people, and for that I'm grateful. For all of you 189 subscribers on YouTube, I'm grateful. I am grateful that you can follow this girl from the village. To the 1,806 uh, followers on Facebook, I'm grateful to you too that you listen to my message and we're a small tight group. I'm so grateful. You see, when I tell these stories on Facebook, I'm hoping to be a voice for the young girls who would want to know what women of their village or my village have said because I was looking for those women. I couldn't find them anywhere. So I wrote a dissertation to record women's voices. And my dissertation is entitled, Towards a Cultural Rhetorics Approach to Caribbean Rhetorics, African Guyanese Women from the Village of Buxton Transforming Oral Histories. You see, in our village, people like to say, what is story say? I took the what is story say and made it the framework for my dissertation, whoever is such a thing. I you take village talk and make it something academic. That's what I did. To show them what's possible. So when I'm on here announcing the doctor, it's not because I'm proud. Yeah, kind of proud. But it's because it's coming from pride from a good place. So, today I want to look back. This is a gratitude moment. I want to be grateful and I want to reflect how I do gratitude. So I do it to tell the young girls who are watching me, Akila and Ayoka and Leel and Donica and Kayla Dane and all these young girls and Afaf and all of them and boys like Joshua and all the village children and my family that they can know why I speak and on what authority I speak. I speak from a place of gratitude. All right, so this is the COVID time. It's been a year since I started this What Is Story Say on Facebook. I first wanted to publish my dissertation orally. That was my intent. I had started publishing the dissertation in the Box and Friendship Express with um, Lorna Campbell. I had a wide readership, many places in the world, among Guyanese and other, other people. But I wanted to have this other platform. So I wasn't sure about Facebook, but my friend Dion was doing something on Facebook. So I was in a group with her, you know, doing whatever. And then I said, hey, Dion, what do you think about this? I want to do this dissertation thing on Facebook. And she said, yeah, do it. So I had a little bit of reservation, but she talked me into, you know, how I can put myself out there. So I did that. So thank you very much to Dion. That's Dion from Our Story Got Melody. I go father, she should talk story, she talk good story. All right. So, so I want to do this gratitude. You know, I listen to many of you, my followers, and I understand there's a thread that's going through right now. Uh, our stories are entertaining. Yes, we're looking back, but we're going through quite a time. This pandemic is doing a number on our morale, and sometimes many of us don't know what to do. People don't have money. People don't have resources. Some people have, are having waning um, positive outlook on life. I'm here to give you a positive message from women Guyanese women. So let's start with the Guyanese woman in California, Glenda Fortune, Glenda Kite. Glenda said to tell you, be hopeful. She said, yes, you're going to feel down. You have to go through the moments of depression, admit that you're depressed, you don't feel good, you don't want to get up, and things like that. But she said, always think about the hopeful side. 
And I said, what does that look like? How can they be hopeful? Because, you know, I talk to cousins and they're saying other cousins in, in the village, oh, they don't feel so good. This depression thing is getting to them. Well, depression is a clinical thing. So if you have that, you've got to go to the doctor. But if you're feeling down, how do you pick yourself up? And Glenda said, one of the things that we can do is go back to what women have done in the past. And she said, one good thing that we can do is make a dish that we haven't made before that our grandmother or mother made. You see? She said, that's how you can pull yourself out. Get Because when you think about the people who came before you, you're going to feel uplifted. So do that. Glenda did that herself. The girl could not make dalpuri wort beans. You know how much biscuit she make? A lot of biscuit. But now she's making dalpuri. I know she envied me because I could make a wicked dalpuri. Anyway, so she decided to learn to make dalpuri. Now she can make a silky dalpuri, as she said, silky. And she's made it and she's been sharing with other people. The other thing she said to do, find opportunities to monetize your gifts. So she's made dalpuri and she's selling one dozen dalpuri for $30. Anyway, I also asked um, Jennifer, Jennifer Lee, what she thinks I should tell you. And she gave me a long reading here. Um, I'm going to try to summarize and, or sometimes read directly what she said. Jennifer said that, you know, in all of this COVID time, when people are feeling all kind of ways, she too felt like she would get up in the morning and want to cry and don't know why she wants to cry. She felt like she's eating so much and gaining weight, you know, trying to eat the COVID feelings away or the, the knock-on effects of the COVID with the restrictions and movement and so on. And she said, and I quote, we all try to hold on to what we deem as ideal and essential for our self-esteem and our well-being. When life seems hell-bent on stripping it away from us all, so what should we do? She said, the simple answer is to find ways to become resilient. And that's what I want to share with you. How do we become resilient when the mind refuses to let go and we unconsciously choose not to move on? We know it's destructive, yet we cannot seem to help ourselves. She said, if we continue this downward spiral, we will hurt ourselves and our family. So what she said to do is to do something small. So I have my resilient tree here. And on my resilient tree has the word bored. This is what people are experiencing and even more. But on my resilient tree has one of the things that Jennifer said to tell you to do. Do something small. What Jennifer did was make a breakfast for herself. She first she meditated. She took deep breaths, then she made a small breakfast for herself. She ate the breakfast with no music or TV on. She focused on every bite that she was doing, that she was living in the moment. That's what we, in Japanese, we call the Ichigo Ichie. You know, you sit in the moment and enjoy the moment. And so she said, one time she got out of the house and went to visit an elderly woman. You know, elderly people are having a hard time. Even if we can't visit them personally, we can talk with them. So try to do that. She said, talk to people. Um, I do this. Um, I make my planners and so on. And I put down um, time to talk to my sisters and other people. She said, get up and groom yourself. Bathe your skin. Glenda said the same thing. Bathe your skin. Comb your hair. And so on. Breathe. And don't be bored. Another thing Jennifer said, gratitude. When you're eating and breathing, be grateful for the people who came before you, the people who lived before you, the people who aren't alive now. Be grateful for them. And exercise. Exercise is very important. It, um, it raises, you know, it brings all the good um, hormones in you, the oxytocin, the endorphins, the everything else like that, to get your spirits up. Here is how I cheat on the exercise because it's just white outside. I don't want to go out in the cold. I have started exercising in a smart way. Um, I would Every time I go to the bathroom, I would do 10 or 20 air squats. Air squats. You just squat down on this. Like if you're going to sit on the seat, but you don't sit, and then you come up back. I do 10 of those or 20 of those. Um, sometimes at work, I go into the all-gender bathroom. It's a pretty big bathroom. And I would do push-ups against the wall of the bathroom. 
Um, also, um, Brother Terry, or Bishop Terry from Buxton, he has a show on where he's preaching and he's doing exercise. In the nighttime when I get home, I would follow Brother Terry and exercise, connecting with the village. There are ways to pull yourself up. So, I design um, instruments, what I call motivation and success kits. They're like planners, where I write out the ways I find that are useful for me to be successful. I make them for me and share them with my family. Now I put them on Etsy um, for people to buy if they want to. And one of my first purchasers was a woman I got this earring from, an, an African woman in South Africa. She made this earring called Earth Queen. And as I was sharing what I was doing in the troves of the, um, the COVID time, she shared what she was doing to make money and I bought these earrings from her and she bought a planner from me um, from Etsy that's how we're supporting each other so I'm not just all about talk and the support that she gave me from my planners part of that money goes into my funding for sending the tablets that I do to the village so I will talk to you some more perhaps next month uh, or next week about what I do and how I plan. You see, as a girl from the village, I have a set of success strategies that I use and I came upon them. Like I said, I haven't had every reason to fail, but I didn't. And what I did when one time when I found myself as a broke student in the Caribbean, at Caribbean Union College, it was a Christian or Adventist college. I went there after leaving Guyana. And I learned adversity in the Maracas Valley. But then I came out of that triumphant. And I can tell you, I did that because of three principles. A prayer, a piece of paper, and a principle. A prayer, a piece of paper, and a principle. The prayer is because I was trained that way from my grandmother and my mother and being in church, I know how to pray. But I don't always pray the way they teach you in church to pray. Sometimes my prayer is a gratitude, a feeling of thankfulness. I would just lay there and experience that. Or wherever I am, I adopt this attitude of gratitude. Um, the other one is a piece of paper. When I found myself as a broke student, I had to figure out how I was going to make my life in this new country where I was studying abroad and all of that. Broke, broke, had no money. I figured it out. I wrote my goals down, which I will tell you a little bit more about later on. In those planners, I write my goals down, my priorities. I check them off as I go because I want to witness my life. You're born and then you die. What happens in the dash? So my planners tell me what happens in the dash. I, I count those planners that I write in as my storybooks. And I can look back and show you in these books and on my digital um, device, in, like in this one here. You know, I happened to show my sister a big goal that I had in this book. Um, and we accomplished that goal. And you know, this one here, I jot down things as I go. Habits that I'm ha hoping to form. Uh, my planners, if I want to bring them up on here, I can bring them up on a tablet and I can write on them. So that's how I go through that. And the principle I have comes from the village. One, one, dot, build down. That's how I build my life. So I have these motivational success kits that I make for myself and my friends. I put them on Etsy. I had a few on there. On I had a few on there that I started selling. I didn't like them anymore. I took them down and I just have two there. So that's how I go through my life. So I want to offer that to you. If you would like to learn more about that, send me a message. But the message today is be grateful, be thankful, walk good.